Okay, so we left off talking about the applicator brush being used um, again and again. So if you have a bottle of nail polish, nothing's gonna be able to grow in nail polish. It is such a very strong chemical. It's got a lot of, you know, like the acetone in there, the odor. You can't have bacteria grow in nail polish. It's not gonna be able to live and survive in that environment, which is a good thing. So you don't have to get a disposable um, brush for that. Other products you might have to, so for example, one example is with the nail oils. So, what do they say? And also, if there is an open cut in a client, that's something where you always want to use disposable because it's just too much of a risk to even, you know, risk exposing someone to a bloodborne pathogen, then you'd want to use a disposable brush. Let's see, it says it right here somewhere. Know that a brush is considered contaminated if it is used to apply penetrating nail oil to the nail plate and then placed back in the product. Nail oils can become contaminated with bacteria and support the growth of pathogens because it can actually act as a food source of the bacteria. So that's why you always want to use a disposable um, brush to apply nail oils. Um, let's see. So materials and supplies during a manicure are designed to be a single use and must be replaced for each client. Um, these are not considered usable, and one of the first ones is the abrasive nail files and buffers. Abrasive nail files and buffers are generally single use only, and they're available in many different types and grits. An example, they come, an example is that they come in firm, rigid supporting cores, or as padded and very flexible cores. Grits, grits, not grits, oh my gosh, I don't even know why I can't even speak today. Grits range from less than 180 to over 240 per centimeter. A rule of thumb is the lower the grit, the larger the abrasive particles in the file, and the more aggressive its action. The lower grit abrasives, less than 180 grit, are aggressive and will quickly reduce thickness of any surface. Lower grit files also produce deeper, more visible scratches on the surface than, high, than do higher grits. Therefore, lower grit files must be used with greater care and generally are not used on natural nails since they can cause damage. Some of them come with the special blocks that are really gentle and they give you the nice buffed look that's very shiny and soft. Um, some men may prefer that. If they're getting a men's manicure, some may not. Always ask your client. Some females that don't wear um, nail polish may like that look because it just looks healthy and shiny. Also know that abrasive or other implements cannot be stored in a plastic bag or sealed containers because airtight conditions create the perfect environment for pathogens to grow and multiply before the next use. Also know that you can, you must prep or edge your abrasive files before using them on a client to prevent harm from the client. These files are stamped from larger sheet or prepared materials leaving very sharp edges and these sharp edges are not removed before the files are shipped. I'd say that most files are now. I think this book was written a while ago. If you notice your file has sharp edges, just remove them, prep them. In order to prep, uh, not to prep, to prepare, I don't even know why I said per prep, to prepare a file for use, rub another clean unused file across the edge to remove any sharp edges. This action is re referred to as file prepping, so know that for your test. Many cosmetologists prepare their new files and store them in a clean container. Um, check the corners of buffers because they may also require prepping. So your medium grit abrasives are 180 to 240 grits. These are used to smooth and refine surfaces, and the 180 grit is used to shorten and shape the natural nail. Fine grit abrasives are a category of 240 and higher grits. They are designed for buffing, polishing, and removing very fine scratches. Know that abrasive boards and buffers typically have one, two, or three different grit surfaces depending on the type, use, and style. Some abrasive boards and buffers can be cleaned and disinfected. Check with the manufacturer to see if the abrasive of your choice can be disinfected. Also know that um, the buffers are being cleaned within the um, scope of practice or the SOP. Abrasives that cannot survive the cleaning and disinfection process without being damaged are considered disposable and must be discarded or sent home with a client. If you, some client want to keep their you know, nail brush and their file, if they're all single use items, give it to them. Your two or three way buffer, the two or three way buffer abrasive technology replaces uh, the cameos and creates a beautiful shine on nails. The buffer is shaped like a two-sided nail file, long and narrow with one or two additional grit abrasives and a final shine surface. 
begin with the lowest grit abrasive surface in the smoothing cask, move to the larger grit surface, and then finish with the shining surface, which is usually no grit. The result is usually a glossy shine on nails. This buffer is generally used on natural nails in the final step of the two color application of monomer liquid and polymer powder nails, such as the French manicure look for nails that will be worn with sheer or clear polish only. Most two or three way buffers are single use and must be thrown away after each use. The salon or technician must find an inexpensive source for purchasing them or reusable one if regulations allow it. So your two way buffer, you'll see those, it looks like a regular nail file, but there's a slit in between, like one side's white, one side's dark. There's a soft side, which is what will help produce that really nice shiny glossy look. Now your single use or terry cloth towels. Know that any kind of cloth towel, you have to launder them, clean them, bring them out. That's a reusable towel. A fresh clean terry cloth towel or a new disposable paper towel is used after the, for the client after washing hands. So you use a towel or a paper towel for that. Typically you'll take the client in and you'll say, hey, you wash your hands and you'll wash them together or have the client wash on their own. Um, you also wanna bleach them between use if they're bleachable or white. So that is that. They also wipe up spills. Pretty self-explanatory what a towel is. Know that uh, state regulatory alert, reusing implements without properly cleaning or disinfecting them is against the law. This is inappropriate and illegal to do. It can put the salon at risk for a lawsuit, can put you at risk for a lawsuit, and can cause an infection. Gauze, cotton balls, or plastic back pads. Lint-free plastic back fiber cotton pads are used to remove nail polish. Plastic backing protects the professional's nails and fingers because if you have a plastic back when you're soaking it and you're applying it, the plastic's not penetrable, so you're not gonna get the acetone all over your hands. The acetone's gonna dry your skin out if you're always exposed to it. Know that gauze squares or cotton balls are also popular for removing nail polish because they're inexpensive and perfectly designed for other application tasks. Gauze squares come in a two by two form or a four by four form, and they have many uses in manicure service from product removal and application. Um, all these materials must be stored in a manner to prevent dust and debris from contaminating them plastic or metal spatulas. So these are gonna be used to remove product from the respective container. If a spatula comes in contact with your or your client's skin, it must be properly cleaned and disinfected before being used again. Some of them just have wooden spatulas where you can scrape the lotion you need or the treatment you need, apply it and then toss out. Um, also don't use the same spatula to remove dissimilar products because that will alter the chemistry and could cause a reaction. And if you are interested in knowing how the cosmetic products work, they have a great book. They have Nail Structure and Product Chemistry, second edition by Douglas D. Shum, published by My Lady. As part of Cengage's Learning and My Lady's Skincare and Cosmetic Dictionary, third edition by Natalia Michelin and M. Michelin, also published by My Lady. So the two books, Nail Structure and Product Chemistry and My Lady's Skincare and Cosmetic Ingredients Dictionary 3 are two books you want to have in your library if you want to be a pro with this. Also know that the CDC states that it does not matter whether soap or cleanser is used in the salon if it's antibacterial or not. Um, this book is actually outdated because this was not updated. I want to say it was around 2015-ish where the FDA got rid of antibacterial soaps. They were not needed because they were causing antibacterial resistance. As long as you have warm water and you have soap, you give it a good lather, that de-germs the hands, removes debris. Antibacterial does not mean squat if you're using soap antibiotics in it. It's not gonna do anything extra for you than just regular soap and water. So soap, we use soap, it is um, used to remove up to you know, debris and remove over 90% of pathogenic microbes from the hands. It reduces the risk by, you know, killing off the, some of the bacteria. So always wash your clients, have the client wash their hands and wash your hands before each service. Liquid soaps are ideal um, because bar soaps can harbor bacteria and become a breeding ground for pathogenic bacteria. So you always want even like an automatic one where you put your hands under and it just comes out or a pump. Polish remover. Polish remover is another product we use. Um, polish remove. Oh, and by the way, I just want to mention this before I get any deeper. This section is going to be professional cosmetic products for nails. I should have addressed that um, earlier. So soap is the first product we discussed. The next one is polish remover. Um, a polish remover. They're used to dissolve and remove nail polish, like it says. 
there are two types of polish removers, acetone and non-acetone. 99% of the stuff we do is acetone polish remover. It is really stinky, but it works. Know that non-acetone removers um, still have an ingredient in there that is like acetone, but not as efficient. Non-acetone removers will not dissolve enhancement products as quickly as acetone, so they are preferred when removing nail polish from nail enhancements such as wraps. Both acetone and non-acetone polish removers can be used safely. Always read their instruction before use. Um, nail creams, lotion, and oils. These are designed to soften dry skin around the nail plate and increase the flexibility of natural nails. They are effective on nails that appear dry and brittle. Nail creams are barrier products because they contain ingredients designed to seal the surface of the skin and hold subdermal moisture in the skin. Nail oils are designed to absorb into the nail plate to increase flexibility and into the surrounding skin to soften and moisturize. Typically, oils and lotions can penetrate the nail plate or skin and will have longer lasting effects than creams, but all three products can be highly effective and useful for clients, especially as day use home care products. Cuticle removers. Your cuticle removers are designed to loosen and dissolve dead tissue in the nail plate. That is tissue that can be, so that this tissue can more easily and thoroughly be removed from the nail plate. They typically contain two to 5% sodium potassium hydroxide when added with added glycerin or other moisturizing ingredients to counteract the skin drying effects of the remover. These products must be used in strict accordance with manufacturer's directions. Excessive exposure of the epinechium to cuticle removers can cause the skin to dry, leading to hangnails. You can also give the client a burn if you leave it on too long. Typically, cuticle removers are weird because some of them can be really acidic or some of them can be really alkaline. It's really bizarre because I pH tested one, it was acidic. I don't even know what brand and the other one was alkaline. Typically, potassium hydroxide is going to be a very alkaline product. It's identical to what's in a relaxer, but just had an adjusted pH. Um, nail bleach. Nail bleach, these are, and I've, I'll be honest, I've never seen nail bleaches um, ever in cosmetology school. They're used just like a hair bleaches. They contain hydrogen peroxide, so they can cause a burn. It can be very drying. Um, they can even say, oh, they have a keratin binding in there. Doesn't make it any less damaging. You're going to use them to remove any stains in the skin of the nail. So if they have tobacco stains, that will work. Um, typically, I don't know an example of a nail bleach to give you, but I've never used them. Only because they are so corrosive and they can cause dryness. Um, also know, because we're going to go into polish next, is that you do not want to violently shake your polish bottles. Shaking nail polish will cause air bubbles to form, making the polish application rough and appear irregular. Instead, you gently want to roll the polish in your hands. So colored polish, enamel, lacquer, or varnish, all the same thing as what we call nail polish. Um, color, these are colored coatings applied to the natural nail plate, and again, they're known as polish, enamel, lacquer, or varnish. These are marketing terms used to describe the same type of product containing similar ingredients. Polish is a generic term describing any type of solvent-based colored film applied to the nail plate for the purpose of adding color or special visual effects such as sparkles. Polish uh, is generally applied in two coats over a base coat and then followed by a top coat. Your base coat is going to form the basics of your manicure. The base coat creates a colorless layer on the natural nail and nail enhancement that improves the adhesion of the polish. It also prevents polish from imparting a yellowish staining or other discoloration on the natural nail plate. Some nail plates are especially susceptible to stains from red or dark colors, so the base step is important. Base coats are also important to use on nail enhancements under colored polish to prevent surface staining. Base coats rely on adhesives, uh, which aid in retaining polish for a longer time. Like nail polish, base coats contain solvents designed to evaporate. After evaporation, a sticky adhesion-promoting film is left behind on the surface of the nail plate to increase adhesion of the colored nail. So also, if you're buffing the nail with a nail file and there's other openings in the nail, the base coat is going to go in there, fill those cracks, create an even base. It'll dry. You can layer your colors on it. Also watch um, the 150 layer challenge. It was big a few years ago when people do nail polish. It's really cool how 100 layers of nail polish stack up like that. Your base coat, if you don't use it, you're not going to get as much wear and tear out of your nail polish. It also is really um, reckless because if you have any buffing, your nail polish can go in there and you'll get some staining. Next are um, nail hardeners. Nail hardeners are used to improve the surface, hardness, or durability of weak, thin nail plates. If properly 
used, some nail hardeners can also prevent splitting and peeling of the nail plate. Hardeners can be applied before the base coat or after as a top coat according to the manufacturer's directions. Some hybrid products will claim to be a hardener and a top coat all in one. There are several basic types of hardeners. Protein hardeners are a combo of clear polish and protein such as collagen. They provide a clear hard coating on the surface of the nail but do not change or affect the nail plate. Know that protein collagen has very large molecules and it cannot be absorbed into the nail plate. Other types of nail hardeners contain reinforcing fibers such as nylon that also cannot be absorbed into the nail plate. <coughs> Therefore, the protection they provide comes from the coating itself and they are not therapeutic. So if it claims to all protein or strengthens it, nothing is physically gonna go in there and permanently change your nail as a medicine that just doesn't work that way. If it did, it would be a drug, it would be shut down in a New York minute. So when it claims it, uh, sorry, I have dry throat. If it claims to have a um, medicinal effect, typically that's a product you wanna avoid. It's just trying to sh sell you on a sham. Um, know that the ingredient in hardeners that was believed in the past to be formaldehyde is actually methyl methylene glycol. It's an ingredient that creates bridges or cross links between keratin strands that make up the natural nail, making the plate stiffer and more resistant to bending and breaking. Methylene glycol is also non-irritating the skin. They're useful for thin, weak nail plates, but should never be applied to nails that are already very hard, rigid, or brittle. Methylene glycol hardeners can make brittle nails become so rigid they may split or shatter, which is pretty scary to think about. If signs of excessive brittleness or splitting, discoloration of the nail blood, or any signs of adverse nail and skin reactions occur, stop the use. And nine times out of your 10, your client will say, oh, that one product you gave me to recommend is a hardener. Hey, my nail's been breaking. Tell them to stop it immediately. It'll only get worse. Um, know that, um, what else? If you have any uh, allergic reactions, don't use a product. Clients are generally instructed to apply this product daily over nail polish as a top coat or under nail polish as a base coat when the polish remo is removed and reapplied. Clients must be instructed to follow the manufacturer's instruction. So when we get back, we're gonna actually take an early five minute break so I can get some water, my throat is super dry. I'm gonna go over the difference between home care products and retail products, there's a big difference. And then we're gonna go into dimethyl urea hardeners and everything else. <laughs> 